Welcome back. I want to take a quick second to tell you about our sponsor of today's episode of North American Deer Talk, CNE Wildlife Products. CNE Wildlife is a trusted leader in biotechnology for the cervid industry. They offer micro encapsulated bacteria products that are research supported through Texas Tech University. With more than 30 years of experience and commitment to all natural probiotics, this product line continues to be a mainstay in herd management programs across North America. And the reason is simple. They are passionate about the cervid industry. They have products for elk, whitetail, muleys, red deer, and more. With products ranging from Fawn Paste and Electromax to Guardian Plus, Whitetail Energy Pack, Jumpstart, or their ever popular Top Score Extreme, they just flat out work. We've been a CNE Wildlife product user for more than 15 years. To learn more about CNE Wildlife, check out episode 54 of North American Deer Talk, a probiotics masterclass with CNE owner Sadie Horrocks, and give her a call today to start using the products we do here. Hey, it's the Deer Wizard, host of North American Deer Talk. I want to tell you about a great new advertising and research platform that we've developed for you, CWDbreeding.com. You know, as the deer industry continues to mature and develop around chronic waste and disease and its known genetic heritability, resources like CWDbreeding.com become essential tools for deer managers across the country making decisions about their herds. I really wanted a platform that excelled at hosting GBV and codon markers in a filterable and searchable manner, but I also wanted to have high quality pictures, videos, ages, scores, NADAR numbers, and a whole host of other information to go along with that. This database puts everything in one easy to find location and allows you to access the industry's greatest genetic resources. I look forward to seeing all the great bucks that people have to offer in one easy to find location, cwdbreeding.com. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of North American Deer Talk. So on today's show, which is episode 71, we are talking uh, health management and uh, vaccines today. So I'm going to run through some of the documentation that we have on our uh, Servid Solutions website, and we're just going to talk vaccine recommendations and guidelines. Uh, but first, I want to kind of set the stage for um, spring because today is March 1st, and um, I know there's some area of the country, um, you know, you guys are going to start cutting grass soon um you're getting some warmer days heck we're getting some warmer days up here we have a little snow on the ground but um those things are coming so anyway i just wanted to kind of uh, lead up into you know uh, spring and and just give some of my thoughts on you know handling does and kind of getting prepared and some some guidance and then uh dig into some of the recommendations that we have um that are just kind of based off of our experience and these are the things that we put forward um, kind of on the Servid Solutions platform itself. So I think with that said, you know, it's important to, um, at least for us, to get in that mindset of the importance of a vaccine program. So I'll share, I'll share a little bit of this with you. And I, I think I've, I've talked at length about my thoughts on uh, the importance of pen density, um, the importance of vaccines or, or using some sort of vaccine protocol, uh, and then nutrition to a lesser extent. And I had, I had um, created a, uh, an article and, and uh, submitted that as a, a contribution piece, if you will, to the folks over at deer tracking. And you'll be seeing a kind of more full length article on those three things called the pillar, uh, the pillars of success. And the more time that I uh, spend in the deer world, specifically raising um, whitetails for, you know, 
generally more for, for breeding purposes and for stocking, it, it continues to become more evident of the kind of bigger picture things that have lots of nuance within them, but that are, in my eyes, the most important things. And, and these are the pillars of success. So I, I look forward to, um, I look forward to you guys being able to read that article a little bit. Um, and I, I think, um, I think Tara said that that's coming out uh, just prior to Nadifa. So here in the next few weeks, you'll start seeing those in your mailbox. And I'd love to hear some feedback on them. Um, we're going to, once once that article is published and, and comes out, uh, we'll talk more about it. We'll probably do a, a full show on uh, each of those topics. And and I think there's more. I just, I, I, had, I had been chatting with a buddy of mine, just saying like, the hardest the hardest way to communicate generally with people is through writing because it requires the writer to um you know really think about their thoughts a bunch and and you know the words the words have meaning um so anyway i want to i want to start doing those those types of things more uh, for you all whether they have value to you or not that's that's uh for you to decide um, I, I like doing them cause they, they, they still hold value for me. Um, it's, it's good for me to kind of go back and read what I've written on a few of these things. So there's, there's that, but the coming, coming into spring with those kind of things in mind is, is important. And I, I I'm not going to talk about any, we'll just say this about nutrition. It is incredibly important. I think it's, and this just could be because maybe I'm spoiled with what I feel is a, a really good feed, but like it, it is simple. It is a simple thing to do. Um, it, it can be quite expensive, but like, it's a very simple thing to do. So we're going to take that one off the table. Um, Cause I don't want to get into analyzing feeds on the show right now. We have a good feed. We think that helps a bunch. I think it'll it'll be uh, it'll be easy easy for you guys to fill that hole. So then there's the pen density, and it's all about keeping keeping animal numbers low, and this helps with bacteria loads over time. It helps with social stress, and um, I I, I continue to think about this uh, idea of social stress. Uh, and and those thoughts continue to evolve, and I I think they play a bigger part than maybe what we know. And of course, it's tough to it's really tough to uh, quantify these things. But there's no doubt that less animals equals less problems. Um, and then that leads us into uh, vaccinations. So I'm just gonna pull up a um, I'll pull up an article here. You know what? If you're if you're watching on the video. Um, let's go ahead and, uh, pull this up on the screen so you guys can see it. And get this out of the way. All right. So this is, um, this is just one article within our life cycles dashboard that when you sign up for the service solutions membership. You have access to. I don't know how many articles there are in there. Um, there's segments of podcasts. There's videos. There's a bunch of stuff. We keep adding to it. Um, it's worth every bit of the, in my opinion, it's worth every bit of the sixty bucks for the year um, to take advantage of of having access to that. So uh, at the top, it says uh, the purpose of of vaccination. And then it says animal diseases are often incredibly complex and no vaccine or medication is 100% effective 100% of the time. Vaccinations are part of your overall herd health plan and should be regarded as a tool to minimize risk of disease. And I think that's a key point. Again, we're just trying to minimize the risk of disease. We know that um, disease is, is present. 
and that we're going to have to deal with it. Just this is the nature of having animals in any type of um, confined space. And when I say confined, that can vary um, greatly. And then we come back to the pen density idea. But um, we know that um, the purpose of this is to minimize that risk. So back to the article, the immune system responds to path, excuse me, immune system response to pathogens are complex and each animal has numerous factors that influence uh, this response. If an animal becomes compromised, meaning it's been exposed to an extremely high percentage of pathogen, pathogens, the vaccine may fail to protect from clinical disease. Ideally, vaccination should prevent or aid in the prevention of clinical disease and is used in conjunction with a comprehensive health plan. So that kind of gives you the general purpose of why we vaccinate. We are, dry, we are trying to stack the deck in our favor to uh, keep these animals healthy. So the administration, this is basic stuff, but we're just gonna, we're just gonna go through it. Um, subcutaneous administration is preferred. Uh, in that neck and upper shoulder region. Uh, and you can always default to the instructions on the bottle. So um, a couple key points of what to expect after uh, vaccination. And these are, these are common. They happen a whole bunch, right? It's very common to see discomfort and or swelling at the injection site. This is the reaction to the vaccine. Uh, mild or moderate fever. So if you were to handle those animals again, um, as part of their immune response, they get a fever. That means everything's working fine. Um, you see decreased appetite and activity, and uh, you could call that depression. Um, those are going to be seen for, uh, call it one to four days post-injection. And then there's some lameness and soreness, which you're going to notice right away um, as limping. So uh, there's no doubt that these uh, vaccinations have an effect on the body, and it may seem initially uh, like a net negative kind of thing. Of course, I said, I said, hey, give the shot. You're going to see potential uh, swelling at the injection site, a fever, decreased eating and activity, and you're going to see them limping around. You'd be like, no, I don't want to give it, right? Once all that is done, it is... and. I think it's incredibly beneficial overall uh, to the health of the uh, the herd at large. So those, um, you can call them trade-offs or compromises uh, that, that, that you expect to happen after vaccine, um, after vaccination, excuse me. Those are things that um, are, are worthwhile to me. And generally speaking, those responses are, are good things because we know the vaccine's then working. Okay. So the recommended uh, schedule is all animals, when you begin the program, they need a, a shot and then they need another shot three to six weeks later, right? So we just call that a booster. Once you've been on that program and you've got those first two shots, that uh, uh, initial shot and the booster shot knocked out of the way, three to six weeks apart, we just recommend a maintenance dose or a maintenance protocol that delivers uh, two cc of the uh, vaccine on a biannual basis. So once in the spring and then once in the fall. So this is going to be for animals that are continuing uh, to be in the program, i.e. adults. And then you can just treat all of your uh, fawns to that initial um, new animal in the program, right? So when you when you scroll down past this, if you're looking at it, we have two nice kind of breakdowns of uh, vaccines, right? So we got spring, new to vaccination, and then we have fall, new to vaccination. And simply all that means, and we'll, we'll talk about the spring first because that's relative to uh, this time of year. These are gonna be for spring administrative doses when you're new on the program. So males, you're looking at prior to antler growth. We want to do those now. That's going to be two cc's anytime in between about February and April 1st. There's a range. Some of you may be like, I'm not running my deer to vaccinate them 
in March because they already got six six inches in antler. I understand completely. You can run them before that. Um, you you have that kind of duration of window, and and certainly all those other factors with specific animals need to be taken into play. So males two cc's anytime in between. Call it February first and April first, and then a booster three to six weeks later. Red does. Red does are also going to get two cc's somewhere around. 50 to 60 days prior to fawning, and then a booster three to six weeks after the first dose. Now, this can this 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 sounds controversial to a lot of folks. Um, and and I will I will uh, spend the time making my case at a later date about the economics of uh, what healthy fawns look like. And we'll try to I'll try to do that empirically. I've been meaning to do it. Um, but just just know this that we've had um, way over a hundred thousand deer vaccinated uh, with these products, and I personally have had um, many animals, uh, dozens and dozens, vaccinated, um, literally like a week, two, three weeks prior to fawning with no adverse reactions, no compromise to the fawns, no abortions, no stillborns, that kind of thing, right? So from a safety standpoint, it is, um, it's, it's very doable. Now, those are what I just mentioned, like, you know, a week before. No, I don't want to do that, right? Like, that's not, that's not the case. But we're working with, usually we're working with large groups of animals. And we're working off of estimated gestation rates so let's just we'll use some real real time scales here and you can you can kind of adjust how you would like to to set your set your scheduling up for administration so let's just say that your estimated fawning date is may 25th okay and we have all the gestation charts in the um, in the membership area. You can just hop in there. Okay, I ate on AI'd on uh, November second. My estimated date is the the twentieth of of May. Um, anyway, that's there. So we're back to May twenty fifth. So your estimated time is May twenty fifth. How do you know this? Well, you did a bunch of AI, and you have a, a known gestation time. The live breads are a little more difficult, but if you look at previous history on your farm, you're going to see that the bulk of your fawns traditionally are born in a, a two to four week time frame. This usually, depending on where you are in the country, up north, it's a little earlier, down in the south, it's a little later. Um, call it the last two weeks of May, first two weeks of June. That's when we're going to see the, the bulk of those fawns. And again, every farm's a little different. Just look at previous years and um, you can make that kind of call. We're going to use May 25th because I think that's a, a good date to use. So if I wanted to fall into uh, that three to six week booster window, let's just use four weeks because that's a month. It's it's easy math. April 25th. So April 25th is shot number two. That's the booster. And I want to go back four more weeks for my initial shot, shot number one. And that's going to be um, March 25th. That's it. March 25th, you, you do a shot. April 25th, you do another shot. Now, I want to come back to the, um, the idea of that, you know, four weeks prior to, uh, to fawning because it's, it's, a, it's a little bit of a, I don't want to say it's a new concept because we've been doing it for a long time and I, I know tons of other people have too. Um, we think that's an excellent time to get the most out of the vaccines given and provide some of that passive immunity, which is a, another concept that we cover in a separate article, passive immunity to these fawns. And that's just the idea that uh, immunity is conferred from the adult female to the fawn via colostrum, right? And I've done plenty of tests here to find out if our fawns are getting adequate colostrum from their moms. And the 
overwhelming majority, like 98% of all fawns born on our farm for an entire year got plenty adequate colostrum. So generally speaking, if you have does that are feeding fawns, they're doing a good job. Um, so that four week window, most of the issues, if there are any, come from handling. So we want to make sure that our facilities that we have to handle these animals are really in um, tip top shape. They're set up to keep and maintain low stress on the animals when we're handling them. And you want to have a little bit of care when you get up close to the chute. So, you know, most chutes are set up really nice. So those animals aren't banged around when they're four weeks prior to fawning. They're going to be pretty big. Um, a lot of that uh, amniotic fluid is depleted or taken up uh, by fawn. So just imagine a, a bag, right, in the backside of a doe's belly. And I'm not talking about udder bag. I'm talking about a, a amniotic sac bag. There's two fawn stuff in there. As they grow, that, that fluid kind of becomes less and less. So there's less protection around those animals. They're also much more robust because they're further along, um, you know, in their, their maturity. So uh, generally speaking, you're going to be okay. The other thing that you need to consider is how uh, full that milk bag is, right? So the other, the other issue that can happen and, and needs to be um, kind of needs to be addressed is the fact that um, there is the potential for a doe to blow a blood vessel in her udder. And, and that's a bad thing, right? We don't want that. So just be careful, gentle, if you will, uh, when you're handling these does and, and you'll be fine. If you have some really high stress does, uh, you may consider, you know, delivering vaccine via remote injection and just not bringing them into the barn. Another thing is, is you may consider um, not keeping does like that on your farm. And over time, you just kind of dial your program in, you dial your does in, and you have this nice efficient system where you have does that handle well, there's reproductive considerations, um, so on and so forth. So, you know, this is this is kind of the, the general overview, if you will. So anyway, um, those things are here. Uh, I'm not going to cover the fall uh, today. We're just going to call this, you know, spring spring vaccine. I, I do want to cover for those that are already on a vaccine program, uh, bread does, you want to do two cc's 30 days prior to fawning. And then for males, anytime between February 1st, April 1st, and that's prior to antler growth. If you're looking for bottle fed fawn protocols, we have those two. Um, and, and that's a, a kind of a, a spin on uh, normal uh, vaccinating and how we look at that because of uh, the nature of, of bottle feeding. So there's those. If you want to learn more about the, the fall, of course, that's that's right here. Um, again, we have tons of articles like this, but um, I just wanted to kind of highlight, um, I wanted to highlight what kind of what that vaccine program looks like the little bits of the how-to um, that I find uh, to be import important. So hopefully that um, that helps. Again, it's 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 there in black and white for you. It's it's pretty simple. It has provided um, it has provided hundreds of farms um, a, a really quality health program that. I think has some good lasting effects and it's, it's something that like, we just, we don't compromise on that here. And that's, that's just one of those kind of core tenants, um, AKA the pillars of success, which I, I, I really hope you all get a chance to read. And they're just, they're, again, they're simple concepts, but check out deer tracking. Um, if you don't subscribe to that magazine, you should, uh, the Barks family is, is great. Shout out to, um, you know, Randy Perra and the boys up there, um, they have a really interesting story. Um, a lot of, a lot of heartbreak, 
and um, a lot of positive things that they have going on that they've been through. And of course, 25 years later, um, they're still here. So anyway, check out Deer Tracking. Um, it's a great magazine. It's 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 the oldest in the industry, the best I can tell outside of, you know, in the Defa mag, but it's it's been around forever and they they do they do a good job putting those together. So check them out. Uh, check out the Pillars of Success. And if you have questions on the vaccine program, just head over to Servant Solutions and uh, dig around on the website. And if you think that the membership may be of value to you just for the the uh, educational resource, not necessarily to, you know, get a, a you know, a big discount on vaccine, y- you can subscribe over there. It, it, you know, perhaps you enjoy the uh, the content that we put out here on North American Deer Talk. And you're like, hey, I want to, I want to support you. I want you to keep doing that. I, I, I appreciate that. That's, um, that's awesome. So th- thank you if you want to do that. And, um, you know, I think, I think there's a ton of value over there we're going to keep working on building value for you guys. So I got to run. Um, it's always good to chat with you. If you have any questions, give me a holler. You guys got my number. You got my contact info. You know where to find me. And with that, stay tuned for another episode of North American Deer Talk.